sure the focus is on what helps certain couples have a healthy relationship versus an unhealthy relationship really speaks on contempt. Now, I'll give you an example of this you're able to utilize in your relationship. This will be where you are with your partner. Your partner is giving you some feedback. Maybe they're not too happy about blank, blank, blank that's happening in your relationship. So while they do that, and here's that key behavior that research says, stay away from this, right? This is what kills relationship. This is poison to relationships. The couple listening rolls their eyes, right? They go, oh my God, right? They, they engage in those type of gestures. And you know what I'm talking about. Now you've seen this, maybe you've done this, right? We got to own up. We're humans. We, we, we make mistakes from time to time. Well, research shows, this is research all about building healthy relationships. You know, why and how? It tells us, it says, here's a nugget to pull away. Do not do that because that's going to lead things in the wrong direction. So now that you know that, nip it in the butt, right? Agree to not doing it. The next point to look at, this is important. What happens if it takes place, right? What happens if it takes place? Because I'm human and some things are going to upset me and piss me off, but I want to have a healthy relationship. I want to, I want to be able to grow old together. Well, my friends, when it does take place, own up to it. Do not act like it didn't happen because that devalues the other person. Do not shift to attacking them and tell them, well, you did blah, blah, blah. Because we know the old saying, don't fight fire with fire. Do not fight fire with fire. This is going to have one of those giant California fires. We do not want that. So if this does happen, right, if I roll my eyes at my partner, that's a very poor eye roll there, my next job is to own up, is to practice accountability and vulnerability, to be able to say, hey, you know what? I am sorry. That's something I'm working on. So that helps us to constructively work together. My partner is still probably going to be bothered by, you know, frustrated, annoyed, if you will, with the gesture that I did. But at that point, the best that I can do is to show up and to be authentic and to be genuine and compassionate by apologizing, by having a sincere apology. So if you notice that that relationship killer takes place in your relationship, again, go ahead and address it. Number two, when it does take place, own up to it. And then number three, this is like a pre-exercise you could do before you start any kind of conversation with your partner. Set the tone, right? If you look at sports, they always set the tone. At the beginning of a baseball game, they do all sorts of stretches and warm-ups. They look at the, the bullpen on who's going to be pitching. They look at the lineup, who's going to be playing in what position. All of that is setting the tone, making sure that things are structured accordingly. Now, in your relationship, you could do the same thing. It reduces error. That margin of error goes down the moment that you take a little bit of time out of your schedule to set the tone. And you could do that very simple. A very simple way to do that would be if you want to talk to your partner about something, start it with a smile. Say, hey, we got to talk about something and go ahead and put these in there and say, look, I want to show up here with love. I want to show up here with the respect. I want to show up here with kindness. That small little shift there, it'll make a tremendous difference in the way that you show up in your relationship. All right, so take those nuggets, put them into play. It's important to listen, to gain knowledge, but you got to put it into play.